With tokenization, we took our first step in pre-processing our corpus. In this video, we'll continue by covering a few more common and basic pre-processing steps, namely case folding, stop word removal, stemming, and lemmatization. We'll look at what they are and how to realize them through Spacey. As we saw previously, a common way to look at pre-processing is as a pipeline, where we can combine different steps as needed. At times, we may want to even have a step before tokenization. For example, if we scraped web pages, we may need to remove HTML tags before tokenizing the extracted text. Let's talk about other steps we might add, depending on our project. Starting off with a simple one, case folding, which is just making sure all the tokens have the same case, whether it's lower or uppercase. Now, why would we want to do something like this? When we tokenize a corpus, we create a vocabulary, that is, the set of all unique tokens in our corpus. And case folding can affect both the vocabulary and the downstream results. Let's look at a simple example. Take the sentence, Mr. Cook went into the kitchen to cook dinner. If we tokenize without case folding, we end up with this vocabulary. Notice the word cook appears twice, once with a lowercase c and again with a capital C. With case folding, however, cook appears only once. Now, this is a contrived example, but it serves to show case folding can reduce the size of our vocabulary by combining words which differ only in case to one word. And on a large corpus, this can make a difference. It can lead to efficiency gains in both storage and processing. In information retrieval, this could also lead to a higher number of search hits or increased recall. Despite that, most of the time, pipelines often skip this step. This is because case folding can result in information loss. For example, cook as a person's name and cook as a person's job would be folded into the same token, which may not be something we want. If we're searching for information on cook as a person, we don't want to be flooded with hits on cook as an activity. So with case folding, the amount of information we retrieve may go up, but the correctness of the information may go down. We would have decreased precision. So whether you choose to normalize the casing depends on your application. And this is something you're going to see over and over throughout NLP. You'll have your raw data on one end, your goal on the other, and your job is making the decisions and trade-offs in between to best meet your goals. And as is often the case, the straightforward strategy is to try multiple approaches and see what works best. For example, we could be more granular and skip case folding if a word is likely a proper noun. Sophisticated search engines typically use multiple rules behind the scenes and blend the results based on a number of factors. We'll see how to identify proper nouns in a future video. Let's look at another pre-processing step, stop word removal. Stop words are words which occur frequently but rarely carry much information. Words such as the, a, uh, of, and this and that. And stop word removal is simply getting rid of such words in our corpus. As with case folding, stop word removal can lead to efficiency gains. We will reduce the size of our vocabulary, which will save on both memory and computation. So should we remove stop words all the time? Like case folding, it depends. Let's say we want to do some topic modeling. If you're unfamiliar with the concept, topic modeling is automatically discovering different topics present in a corpus. Let's say we have this block of text. Python was created in the late 1980s and first released in 1991 by Guido Van Rossum. This is a block of text about Python's history. If we run stop word removal on this block, we get this. My bet is that even after removing the stop words, it's easy to tell this is something related to Python and specifically its history. So when it comes to tasks where stop words play little to no role and your memory and time constrained, then removing stop words can be handy. On the other hand, let's say you're doing some task where context heavily matters. That is, where a given word's neighbors affect the meaning of something. So a task like sentiment analysis. And we just want to classify whether something is positive or negative. If we have a sentence like this, I saw the movie last night, I was not amused, and we run it through stop word removal, and our stop word list contains the word not, we'll end up with this, saw movie night, amused. And this is going to cause problems and throw off our classifier. By the way, this stop word removal was done using Spacey's default stop word list. There isn't a universal stop word list, and you may even have to customize one for your domain. Whether you should remove stop words comes down to whether it serves your goal. In general, though, if you're not severely constrained by memory and processing and context matters a lot, I would keep the stop words in and use other techniques that we'll explore later in this course. The next step we'll cover is stemming. When we strip a word of its suffixes and depending on language, sometimes it's prefixes, what we're left with is the words stem or base form. So the words banking and banks would share the common stem bank. So stemming would take those two words and combine them under a common stem. 
and this is often accomplished through an intricate series of rules refined over time, the most famous of which is the Porter Stemmer, named after the computer scientist Martin Porter. He dedicated much of his career to creating and improving stemmers because of their value in certain tasks. We'll be looking at the Porter Stemmer in the demo. Note that the stem may not be a valid word. Because stemmers follow a series of hard rules, you'll sometimes end up with stemmed words we wouldn't find in a dictionary. So, should you stem? Like case folding, stemming reduces the size of our vocabulary and generalizes our model to behave the same for words with common stems. In information retrieval, if we index using stems, it can result in more documents retrieved. So if someone types in banking, it'll get stemmed down to bank, and all related documents will be returned. Stemming can also help us deal with words that aren't in our vocabulary, because maybe the stemmed version of a foreign word is in our vocabulary. But like case folding, it can affect the precision of our results. After all, banking and banks are two different concepts, and we may care about documents specifically related to banking. A stemmer can also overstem and understem, which could further lead to erroneous results. To get around this, some search engines will perform a search using both stemmed and unstemmed words and blend the results using other relevancy metrics. But in general, stemming is rarely used these days outside of large scale keyword search. And there's a better alternative, which leads us to the last step we'll cover in this video. And that's lemmatization. Lemmatization reduces a word down to its lemma or dictionary form. This may sound the same as stemming, but they're different. Stemmers use a set of rules to remove prefixes and suffixes, but don't take into account things like synonyms, tense, or whether a word is a verb or a noun. Lemmatizers do. So a lemmatizer would convert the words did, done, and doing into do, since those words are modifications of the base lemma. But unlike a stemmer, a lemmatizer is more subtle and takes into account the role a word plays. It would leave a word like talkative alone because it takes into account the word being an adjective, whereas a stemmer would just convert it to talk. So let's talk about trade-offs. Lemmatization offers similar benefits to stemming, but in general is more accurate than stemming and is preferred. Some libraries, such as Spacey, offer only lemmatization. On the downside, lemmatization can trip us up in certain cases where tenses matter. Lemmatization will normalize them away. It can also cause problems when subtle word usage matters. For example, when we want to identify an author through their work. Lemmatization also requires more resources like dictionaries for word lookups and identifying parts of speech. So that's lemmatization. Now, we're going to recap all these steps at the end of the video, but for now, let's take a look at a demo using Spacey. Let's reopen the NLP Demystified Preprocessing Colab Notebook. Okay, so here we are back in the NLP Demystified Preprocessing Colab Notebook. You'll find a link on the module page. Alternatively, you can visit the course's GitHub repo and find it under Notebooks. And once you have it open, go down to the basic preprocessing subsection here. In the last video on tokenization, we started by upgrading Spacey. Now, if you're running this notebook in the cloud and received a message saying the notebook timed out due to inactivity, you may need to rerun the Spacey upgrade and the statistical package installation. Otherwise, you'll get different results. I've already done that, so if you need to, please pause the video and do so now. So, as we saw previously, when we load a statistical model and create the language object, which we assign to this NLP variable here, it includes a preprocessing pipeline. And this pipeline behind the scenes automatically does everything we covered so far in this video, except for stemming, which Spacey doesn't support. So what we're doing here is loading the English core web small model and passing the sample text to the NLP object to get tokenized and processed. Spacey's tokenization is non-destructive, meaning the tokens themselves are not modified directly. This ensures the original text is always reproducible from the doc object. Instead, each token has a number of attributes, which allows us to generate different views of our text. So if we want to view our text with lower casing applied, we can use each token object's lower underscore attribute. We can also apply conditions as needed. In this example, we're skipping casing if the token is the start of a sentence, which we can detect using the isSentStart attribute. It's a similar story with stop word removal. We can access Spacey's default stop word list like so, and there are just over 300 words here. And if we want to view our text with stop words removed, we can use the isStop attribute to filter them out. And finally, lemmatization. As you may have guessed, each token also has a lemma underscore attribute containing the token's lemma or dictionary form. Here we're printing out both the original token and its lemma in a series of tuples. 
we can see that words such as told, was, and done were lemmatized to tell, be, and do, respectively. In contrast, shortly remains shortly, which is something a stemmer would have modified. And speaking of stemming, Spacey doesn't support stemming natively, but for completeness, we can use NLTK. As an exercise, find out how to initialize and stem the sample sentence here. A stemmer's already been imported for you. There are other useful exercises here as well, such as figuring out how to modify the Spacey stopword list and adding custom attributes to tokens. All right, so that's how Spacey takes care of basic pre-processing for us beyond the scenes, and we'll be using these features later in the course. In this video, we covered a few basic pre-processing techniques. In general, they offer potential efficiency gains and greater generalization, but at the cost of precision and information loss. Should you apply these steps? Again, it depends on your goal. In general, be conservative and avoid them unless there's a clear benefit in doing so. A lot of NLP development is knowing your data and your goal well and making the most informed trade-offs you can to get there and being creative in the process. There is rarely a clear recipe. Fortunately, with Spacey and other modern libraries, we can get different views into our text and rapidly experiment with what yields the best results, as we'll see when we start doing things like classification. Let's continue on our journey and cover more advanced pre-processing steps in the next video.